provide you uh, through our research on leveraging citation patterns in COVID-19 related uh, biomedical literature. So first, a few words uh, about the uh, university, uh, where, I come, where I come from and where I teach. Prague University of Economics and Business, it's one of the largest universities in the Czech Republic and the largest in the fields of economics, uh, business and information technology uh, combined. We ran a host of uh, uh, different uh, degree uh, programs. I would like to highlight our English uh, master programs uh, uh, in information systems uh, management and uh, economic uh, and data analysis. Uh, we've uh, included uh, data science into our uh, mandatory uh, uh, courses already at the Bachelor of Science uh, level already uh, long before I joined the, the department around 2007. We've been largely relying on visual approaches to, to data science. So our, my colleagues in the department already in, in around 2000 developed a homegrown system for learning called uh, ListMiner. Then in 2012, and I was already involved, we added uh, EasyMiner, which is a web-based uh, system. Uh, these days you would call it a cloud-based system for uh, rule learning, association rule learning, primarily, and uh, classification was possibly one of the uh, first cloud-based uh, systems of this uh, uh, kind. And in 2014, we've added uh, BigML's uh, decision trees, and then we've gradually added other uh, uh, machine learning uh, modules in, in BigML, like uh, clustering and, uh, and logistic uh, regression. Uh, the case study uh, I will be uh, talking about, so, uh, uh, while uh, in the background there is a more comprehensive research, I will present it as a, a form of a, a, a case, case study. Imagine that you manage a, a research team and you need to pair the expertise of your staff with the needs of the wider research community, uh, which will build upon your results. Uh, so you need to very specifically direct uh, your researchers, your colleagues and <laughs> yourself on research that will make an uh, impact. Uh, so first, uh, how to find out whether a research made an impact or not. So as you may know, uh, in science, one of the main key performance indicators, KPI, KPIs, is the number of, uh, of citations. So this is how we will measure success, whether something was uh, successful, made an impact or, or not. And uh, we want to learn from past experience. Of course, past is not always a good uh, predictor for, for the future, but uh, uh, taken with a grain of salt, it's better than, uh, than nothing. So we will uh, show how to leverage existing freely available research uh, articles uh, to help us guide our hypothetical uh, uh, research, uh, research team. So more specifically, uh, the answers uh, that uh, uh, we want are uh, to the following questions. So what topics uh, uh, in this biomedical uh, field of, of COVID-19 uh, uh, research, what topics succeeded? What combinations of topics, possibly research uh, uh, methods and other factors uh, worked well in terms of our, our KPI? As a research manager, we need to uh, carefully uh, assess uh, the scope of resources we put into uh, the, the uh, research. And in, in, in science, the main resource uh, are the uh, scientists, uh, the size of the, of the team. So the larger the team, the bigger uh, the cost. Uh, but the question is, will this, will this, uh, sorry, will this, uh, uh, will this really uh, help? Uh, so the uh, maybe smaller teams uh, will produce uh, uh, better results because there is a little communication overhead, or maybe larger teams are better. So these are the uh, these are the uh, questions that uh, uh, we will explore. And uh, another uh, related uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, decision is. Imagine that your research is uh, almost ready and then you need to select uh, the 
best, uh, most fitting publication uh, publication venue. So there are hosts of uh, uh, possibly fitting uh, journals, uh, and you need to uh, think very carefully uh, where uh, which one is the is the right one for your research, which one uh, will maximize the the uh, the impact. And there are also many uh, small details like how to name the article uh, for the best uh, uh, impact because uh, quite often you are in a very steep uh, competition with tens, sometimes hundreds of uh, other articles with uh, seemingly similar uh, focus. And uh, researchers tend to use the search engines like uh, Google Scholar, where you show us one of the uh, many hits uh, for a uh, specific keyword, so you need to maximize this uh, first uh, impression. So this uh, brings us to say uh, a preview of what we will achieve with uh, BigML in the coming uh, in the coming minutes. The original uh, search that we did uh, was somehow more uh, comprehensive and reported in this uh, uh, article which is uh, currently under preparation will be soon soon available as a preprint and uh, there uh, what we got is uh, what's shown at the at the bottom of the screen so that's one of the uh, many uh, visualizations but this one uh, sh uh, shows on the example of the abstract what words in the abstract or maybe sequences of words uh, uh, contributed positively to the article being uh, uh, well cited and which words like uh, dog or canyon in this case uh, highlighted in, in, in yellow seem to decrease uh, citation probability and the higher uh, the, the, the bolder uh, the, uh, the color the bigger uh, the, the, the impact so this is to how to visualize what uh, we will now be working on, but we will use uh, BigML, not this uh, Python uh, Python library that's used here. Uh, the most important element is the data. Uh, we will use the Court 19 uh, open research data set, which is uh, a large data set of COVID-19 related literature put together by the Ellen AI. Uh, Institute, uh, then we will use just a small subset of, uh, uh, of this data set uh, for which there are some uh, annotations that allow the text to be enriched with additional background information on the biomedical entities, which is out of the scope of this, uh, uh, of this, of this, uh, of this presentation. But as Maria said, one of my interests is linked uh, uh, data, uh, so in the full uh, research we do we do take advantage of this and then uh, we get the citations for this uh, article from the open citations uh, database so this is how the raw data would look like uh, it's uh, uh, it's a it, it has a very simple form it's a single uh, csv file essentially where each row corresponds to one research article we have the title of the article we have the document object identifier we know when the article was published uh who were the, who were the who were the authors and we, we also know the number of citations this uh, article uh, got which is the the kpi for us as the first step in bigml we upload the uh, we upload the data set there we basically see the same thing as we were uh, uh, it was shown in the previous slide but uh, just uh, transposed then uh, we think we can take advantage of the bigml uh, functionality uh, that allows us to uh, process textual data without any uh, uh, external uh, external uh, tool uh, we will use just the basic uh, setting which is highlighted in the in the bottom of the slide i will just briefly uh, uh, explain some of the uh, some of these settings so uh, uh, consider the following fragment of, of, of the abstract uh, structure of coronavirus main proteinase reveals so this is the, the, the this is the, the the abstract and what bigml will do it will uh, tokenize this text so it will extract the individual words and then from these it will take it will generate unigrams which basically means it will uh, 
keep the individual words as individual features. It, we could also ask it to generate bigrams, sequences of continuous words, which would also be appealing because we would also we would then get get uh, more um, comprehensive uh, mentions of biological entities like protein main proteinase. Another uh, thing that we had enabled there was uh, stemming. Uh, stemming will uh, help us reduce the dimensionality uh, because there are uh, a lot of different uh, words so the number of fe generated features would be high but with uh, stemming we can uh, collapse uh, similar uh, words uh, into uh, one word and also we can apply stop word removal which means we will remove uh, uh, words with very little uh, meaning uh, by, by themselves like uh, prepositions uh, the next thing is uh, uh, some basic uh, data uh, uh, pre-processing, uh, which is also a step uh, uh, by the, uh, according to the CRISP DM methodology, which was uh, uh, mentioned earlier earlier uh, today. Um, uh, we will do this pre-processing only on the uh, on the target on the number of citations because uh, we want to uh, uh, to predict whether the paper will be uh, highly cited or lowly cited but we are not that interested in a particular uh, number of citations right because we want to gain some insights but we don't need the, the exact number of citations to be to be predicted so uh, uh, we will derive a new field, uh, which we will name citations, uh, by splitting the open citations field, which contains the numeric uh, number of citations using uh, the median. So it will be split into two categories, low citations and high citations, say, and each of these categories will contain exactly half of the articles. Uh, then we will create a train uh, test uh, split so that we can validate whether the model uh, works uh, okay. For this, uh, we will uh, rely on the default uh, setting uh, built, uh, in, in Big ML. One thing, uh, one small tweak that we can use is putting a particular number into the seat uh, box. It doesn't matter which number it is, essentially, but this will initiate the random number generator so that we, so that we uh, uh, recreate this analysis, we get the same split uh, also the second time. This is important for the reproducibility of our uh, research. Uh, then from the whole, from the, from the available algorithms, we will choose logistic regression. It's a uh, uh, mainstay of uh, uh, machine learning. It's a method uh, dating back to 19th century, but it's uh, still a very uh, 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 it's uh, the truth in the in the 19th century, but it's still very uh, popular. The, the uh, one of the charms of this method is uh, that it doesn't require that much uh, setting. Uh, uh, so we will basically only set the, the, the target and we will remove uh, the predictors that, uh, uh, that we won't use in the analysis. So we won't surely, uh, uh, we don't want there surely the document object identifier, for example, which is the, the unique paper identifier. We will also uh, remove the detailed information on when the article was published. And uh, once BigML builds a model, which in this case, logistic regression is extremely uh, fast. Uh, so in this case, this will take just a uh, very short, just a few seconds, maybe. So the first step we will do is to look at whether uh, the model performs uh, well enough for our purposes. So we will choose evaluate from the, from the menu and uh, choose the test uh, data set, which was already created. And uh, what we can observe is that the accuracy is 64%, uh, which say is good enough uh, for us. It could be uh, better, it could be worse. The, the baseline uh, random guess would be around 50%, right? Because we had two um, equally uh, sized uh, classes. 
Uh, so, uh, assuming that we are fine with this uh, performance of the model, uh, we can uh, go back to the individual, uh, uh, go back to the model and view uh, the, uh, the values of the coefficients uh, that uh, basically uh, comprise the model. So, uh, each uh, feature uh, that was auto that was generated by Big ML is assigned some uh, number, and this number. Uh, expresses how well that feature or, or how much that feature contributes to the paper being classified as highly cited or lowly uh, uh, cited. So lowly cited is the uh, 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 first highly cited is the uh, is the second uh, column here. So uh, now we see what contributes uh, to the paper being uh, highly cited, which topics are uh, Mm, there are a lot of uh, citations, uh, so it's like tracked polymerase or pathogenesis. Uh, similarly, uh, we can uh, sort uh, by the reverse order, and uh, uh, what we can observe here that uh, it seems that research uh, uh, focusing on some specific animals like rats, turkey, cows, bovine. Uh, or research that uh, uh, seems to refer, like in the title, it has a word development, so it may uh, create a mental image of uh, of research uh, reporting just on a work in progress that seems to draw much less uh, attention. Uh, we can also uh, go to our question on which journals uh, draw uh, most uh, citations. So here, uh, what we could uh, See at the top of the list is Nature, which is one of the top uh, cited uh, journals overall. But there are some other specific recommendations, like uh, if the journal has in the uh, in the title "Virus," it's positively associated with the high citation count. We can also look at the question whether smaller or larger teams uh, are better. Uh, what brings success? Uh, this is not that well seen on this screen. Uh, but the uh, the blue line are the highly cited, and the orange line are the lowly cited. So uh, we can observe that once our paper has uh, around 100 authors, we are quite safe to be in the highly uh, cited uh, category. So not sure how practical uh, that is, but uh, in some fields, it's not that uh, uh, unusual. Uh, recommendation and uh, this observation is completely in line with uh, other studies in bibliometry have concluded. We can also look at the year variable which is uh, quite important uh, because we've included research from different uh, even decades with so the, the older the oldest uh, uh, papers date to 1970s that are included in the research and here uh, the second, uh, the high uh, cited uh, category is the blue one, uh, is the blue one, and uh, uh, what we can see here is that uh, the newer the paper, the lower the probability that it will be highly cited, which is logical because uh, the less, the newer, the less time there was for other papers to to cite that uh, paper. Uh, in another iteration of our research is to uh, normalize. Uh, uh, the number of citations by the year or by the age of the uh, of the paper. Another uh, thing that we can try is uh, building a decision tree ensemble, uh, which is a, a state of the art, highly very well performing uh, method, and then comparing uh, its accuracy to or in general predictive performance with uh, a logistic regression. It will perform slightly uh, better. Uh, but this comes at a cost of longer learning time, longer time required to apply the model, and for us, most importantly, uh, slightly lower uh, interpretability. Uh, we can add additional models like uh, those built with neural network and optimized uh, with uh, OptiML. Here, the logistic regression uh, performs somehow in the in the in in, in the middle. Uh, which shows that neural network without some excess, some extra uh, tuning uh, are not all, not always the, the, the silver uh, bullet uh, 
providing the best uh, performance overall. And finally, uh, once we are completely satisfied, we can, we can say, uh, proceed to something that we could call deployment of the model, uh, which is also built into BigML, and we can use uh, its predict uh, feature for that. So we can type in the title of our research, the abstract, number of authors. We can choose the license, like whether we will go uh, with the open source license, uh, Creative Commons license, uh, which is might be slightly more expensive, uh, or our article will remain uh, paywalled, and BigML uh, uh, will apply our model and output the probability shown at the top part of the screen whether the uh, the article will fall into the highly cited or lowly cited category, and uh, what the effect uh, will uh, will be. Uh, so, if uh, in the in the full analysis uh, that we did, we also uh, observed some other patterns in the uh, in the literature, like that articles with authors who have Western-sounding names tend to be uh, better uh, cited, and uh, we've also, with the help of a, a subject matter expert, uh, confirmed uh, worked out a hypothesis for uh, for the patterns related to to animals. So uh, there seems to be a, a relation uh, between a phylogenetic uh, distance from of uh, of the virus uh, studied uh, in the article and uh, and uh, a human virus in terms of the number of uh, citations. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, uh, multiple uh, colleagues. Uh, Lucy will uh, present her research. Uh, also involving text mining in a, a short while. So, hello, I would like to talk today about how to predict uh, company bankruptcy with machine learning models. So, uh, to know the financial condition of uh, a company is important not only for the company, but also for other uh, people on the market, like investors, suppliers, customers, and many others. And it's not a problem to find out if a company is in bankruptcy actually or not. We can easily find it on the web pages of public registers. And uh, But what is interesting and more important is to find out if the company could be in insolvency in the future. So goal of this work is to predict with a machine learning model the probability of a company get to getting into bankruptcy in three years and also find out how accurate this model could be. And uh, because of this goal, we have a classification problem because on the one hand, we have active companies and on the other hand, we have bankrupt companies. And why three years before? Because I think that, for example, one year before, it's very obvious from the data and the company often shows some significant symptoms. And we can see it, for example, from some basic financial indicators. So a bigger challenge is to find out if company uh, could be in the bankruptcy, for example, the three years before. And when I downloaded the data, uh, I downloaded the data in Albertina database, uh, which is a database which collects information from public registers and about Czech companies. And we can very simply filter their active versus bankrupt companies. And there are many uh, interesting information about uh, the companies like financial indicators, uh, data about owners, uh, market segment, uh, district region, and list of uh, documents documents from the registers, which is the variable which then I will use uh, for the text analysis. And for the analysis, I used a random sample of companies and I also filtered only companies with completed data. And in Albina database, there are data, uh, there are annual data. So I chose for the analysis data for one year, a year 2019 for active companies and a year signifying three years before bankruptcy for bankrupt companies. So the bankrupt companies has uh, different years um, 
in different years. So there you can see uh, data which are uploaded from CSV files to Excel, and we can see that there are some of the columns which are used for the analysis. Uh, there is a target column called Mui staff, uh, which means if the uh, company uh, will be in bankruptcy or not. And also, I'm sorry, there for the uh, Czech language, the uh, data in Albertina database are only in Czech, but I have there some translations on the other slides. And there you can see uh, data uploaded already to BigML. I set there the target variable and I, there, I have there uh, some categorical variables like market segment or region. I have there also numerical variables which are often the financial indicators. And uh, there is also text column called text, which means the list of documents from public registers. And I also marked not preferred variables uh, there like ID because I don't want to use it for the training the model. And after that, I can pre-process the text columns, which is very easy to do it in BigML. Uh, I said there uh, that I want to use stop words removal. I also wanted to remove numbers and HTML keywords because I just want to use the words which can bring me some interesting information. And uh, before the training the model, we can, we can do uh, some exploratory analysis. Uh, we can display, uh, for example, word cloud graph, which is a graph which shows us the most frequented words uh, for the text columns. We can see there like notarial deed, balance sheet, financial statements, and many others. And or we can also uh, show dependence of two variables in scatter plot. And before the training and testing, uh, first we have to separate part of this database and use for uh, which will be then use it for training and other part which will be used for testing and checking the predictions. I said there 80% uh, for training and 20% for testing. And uh, also which I changed was the seed number. Uh, there I have one, but it only guarantees me that if next time I will use the same number, uh, I will get the same state data set, same results. So now we know that we have a classification problem but there exist many suitable algorithms uh, for this case which we can use also each algorithm has uh, many parameters which can which can also influence the accuracy of the model so the big ml suggests us to use uh, optimal which can help us to find the best supervised learning model for our data and uh, only what i what i changed there was i set the maximum training time uh, per three hour and uh, I set optimization metric uh, AUC value which is the commonly used evaluation metric for classification problems and there you can see the results from optimal uh, during the three hours was totally evaluated 56 models one decision tree, 52 ensemble models, one logistic regression, two neural networks, and the all models are, are sorted there by the highest optimization metric. And we can see there the winner. Winner is an algorithm called Bootstrap Decision Forest, uh, which is algorithm based on decision trees, and these trees are generated from bootstrap samples. And uh, we, we can uh, very simply uh, display the single decision trees, which were used by the algorithm Bootstrap Forest, which is great because we can interpret the model and we can see how model could make decisions. And for the evaluation, I chose the best model from Optima, which was the Bootstrap Forest, and there exists uh, many suitable and evaluation metrics uh, for the classification problems. Uh, uh, I only use only some of them. 
and uh, there we can see for example confusion metrics uh, which uh, tell us how many companies the model estimates well and how many times was wrong and uh, there are also some metrics which are derived from the confusion metrics uh, like precision which means that that 68% uh, of all uh, of uh, bankrupt companies which were uh, detected by model as bankrupt were really bankrupt and uh, there is for example recall which means that 59% of all bankrupt companies were detected by the model. And we can say also that our model is uh, very good because the uh, value, value of AUC is high, is uh, 0 0.8. And it, it would be, for example, 0 0.5. It would mean that it wouldn't make sense to do decision by this model because the decision uh, would be equivalent to the random choice. So, but it, it's not our example. We have a good model. We can also interpret the model with feature importance, um, which is which, where we can see the most uh, important variables which were used by the bootstrap forest. At the top, uh, you can see the uh, column called text, which is the list of documents from the registers. And also there are um, important uh, some financial indicators like current assets, annual sales, liabilities, and so on. And we can also display the single decision tree from the bootstrap forest. And uh, the single decision tree has a uh, lot of branches. We can mark some branch and see the uh, hierarchical uh, rules, uh, which leads to some decision if the if the company will be in uh, bankruptcy or not. Uh, I am showing their branch, uh, for example, which uh, leads to the bankruptcy, and there is a rule uh, at the for the. Uh, for the variable quick test uh, uh, that if uh, the uh, value of quick test will be higher than 3.6 then it leads to the bankruptcy or there is also interesting rule um, with uh, variable text and it means that that if the company uh, if the list of documents of the company will contain the notarial deed uh, it uh, it could be leads to the bankruptcy. And uh, I wanted to investigate uh, why the bankrupt companies has uh, more of these documents, uh, the notarial deeds, than uh, active companies. And in Albertina database, there are not a uh, whole text of these documents. So I have to uh, I have to investigate it manually, manually search the sum of single uh, companies and I find out, for example, that there is some connection uh, between bankruptcy and execution and also some connection uh, execution with uh, some kinds of the notarial deeds like proposal for dismissal of managing director or decision to amend the contract. So maybe uh, before the Bankruptcy, there were some significant changes which can, which could lead then uh, to the bankruptcy in the future. But uh, I can't confirm it because I, I would have to train the model on all these texts. So maybe it can be a challenge for someone else. So uh, today I showed you how easily can be predicted the uh, bankrupt of companies uh, in big ml and my original model was programming in python and r and i use it for my thesis and i use their uh, algorithm called random forest which is very similar algorithm to the bootstrap forest and i can say that the results were very similar to results in big ml <laughs>